welcome to Schooly Art Class Online. How are you doing on your weekly assignment in your sketchbook? Remember, your assignment is I want you to draw something every week that you are looking at. It means I don't want you to be tracing it. I don't want you to just be making it up in your head. I want you to actually draw something that you're looking at. I drew my teacup from the perspective of looking straight down at it like this. This is what it looks like. It look, I mean, my teapot. It looks really bad. Um, that's okay. Can I tell you a secret? I am an awful drawer. Like the worst. I, I do. I am not proud of how I draw. I am a good painter. I am a good like color penciler. <laughs> I, I can do really good embroidery. I could do lots of good things. One of my main skills is not drawing. I mean, honestly, I, I am never proud of how I draw if I'm trying to draw something that's super realistic. But the reason I want you to draw things that are realistic is because if you only draw what's right in your brain, you're going to miss out on some aspect ratio things. That means if I just draw what this, I think this looks like, I'm just going to draw like a, a rectangle with a base and a circle on top. I'm going to miss out on the angles. So if I'm looking at it from this direction, it's going to look different than if I'm looking at it from up here or down here. So I want to look at it a different way than what I think, which is why this kind of looks squat and like weird. The handle looks weird because if I was drawing it straight on, you wouldn't see the curves and the bends in the handle and you wouldn't see the shadows and those types of things. If I wanted to, I could add in color and I could add in the shadowing, which I will do because eventually I want you all to be able to be able to see the shadows and know where they go. But that's something I'll work on with this is I'll add the shadows in and we'll see what it looks like. I know that seems really crazy, but the first thing you might want to draw if you're working on shadows is a ball with a light on it. And then you can see that there's light on this side of the ball and there's shadows on this side of the ball. And then you'll see how it looks in real life. And that's how we can start drawing things in 3D. But for now, let's work on drawing things just how we see them. So if you see a tree, I want you to actually look at what the tree looks like. Don't just draw a brand, like a, a trunk with fluffies around it. I want you to actually see what it looks like. Does it curve a little in this direction and then curve weirdly on this side? Or is it straight with like branches sticking out? I want you to actually look at it because that way we can be more aware of our surroundings and more aware of how things look. Because if we just rely on what it looks like in our brain, we might not be right. But I also want you to know with a sketchbook assignment, you may not like it. It may be like your least favorite thing, and that's okay. But it's just to teach you how to draw and help you get more comfortable with it. I know that I need to be drawing every single day. I'm really bad at that because I know I'm not very good at it. And sometimes when you're not very good at something, you don't want to do it. But we need to do it anyways. So I'm going to be doing this challenge with you guys, okay? And hopefully at the end of the semester, we all do better than what we're at right now. So I want to do better than this. And I hope whatever you draw this week, you can do better at the end of this semester too. So this is a growing process. It's a learning process. It's pretty awesome. I still have my sketchbooks from junior high and high school. And I know that I'm doing better now than what I was doing then because I have the proof in front of me. So this is going to be a fun journey. It's going to be awesome. I know you guys are going to love it. Let's talk about Vasily Kredinsky. Kandinsky. You know, I can't. It's hard. My mouth doesn't want to make the words that are here. That's okay. So I hope you also have your little sheets. You got them in class. I will email a copy to your mamas. So there it is. I might even see if I can just make a Google file that make a link on here. Who, who knows? But these are his artworks. I'm pretty impressed with him. I would love it if you guys went and visited this website right here. His website is really awesome. It has all of his artwork on it. Now, I would love it if you guys drew something in your sketchbook. Also, 
that was another one of these. Okay, can you do one? Can you do another abstract expressionalism? Um, you can do it however you want it to do it. You can trace uh, some cups and some bowls to make it circles. And with some ruler, you can take a line and make really straight lines. Um, you can make it look like an egg in a frying pan with coffee. That's fine. You can do it just a whole bunch of things that look like feelings and emotions and craziness inside your brain. You can do it with color or you could do it with no color. You could do it with like little bits in color or you could do it with lots of color. Um, if you would like to do another artwork like we did a class the other day, I'll go ahead and walk through that with you right now. Okay, let's get started. To do this, I'm going to use a bunch of different black markers with different sized tips. Okay, so I've got a giant jumbo pen. I've got two paint pens. That's not necessary, but what I am paying attention to is like this size here and this size here. So like Sharpies, you could use Sharpies. You could use Crayola markers. You could use uh, any type of different markers you have. You might have fine tips or super tips or like big chunky markers. You could use a ballpoint pen. You could do anything you wanted with these. I've got a brush pen. You might have that. You might not. You could use a pencil. You could use like a felt tip pen. Anything you've got. Totally fine. Just make sure you've got like three to seven. Oh, I've got seven. Wow. Three to six different size pins. Okay. And you can close your eyes for this if you want. You don't have to because we've done the close your eyes things once. If you would like to just follow along and draw it wherever you want, that's fine too. So I'm going to use this size paper. Um, I'm using watercolor paper because I don't really have any regular paper here except for printer paper. Um, if you're doing this in your sketchbooks, that would be super awesome. That way you have it with you and you can work on it whenever you want. When I was in high school, I used to take my sketchbook everywhere because instead of like playing a game on my Game Boy or on my phone, I didn't have a phone. Are you kidding? <laughs> um, instead of doing that, I would draw or I'd read a book, but usually I'd be drawing. So let's do this. All right, let's take a, a medium tip. Take one of your markers and I want you to draw a line from one corner to the other. I'm doing my diagonally. And then I'm going to take that same, no, I'm not. I'm going to switch markers right now because I can. I'm going to take this chunky one and draw a couple lines across that, that line I just drew. And I'm staggering mine a little bit. You don't get to see mine until we're done drawing, okay? Because if you're doing this eyes, eyes closed, you just have to follow the directions however you want. I'm going to take my chunky boy. A chunkerboard marker, and I'm gonna draw. Oh, that's awful! A square, dude. That's the worst looking square I have ever seen, and it's all gross looking. It's gross, so gross. You know what? I'm just gonna color that in. I'm gonna just gonna black make that whole square black. It's actually kind of a rectangle. I'm just going to deal with it. A square can be a rectangle, but a rectangle can never be a square. So I'm going to take uh, this uh, tip, like fine tip marker, and I'm going to draw some circles. But I'm not super good at drawing just circles plain. So I'm going to use my teacup, which means I'll probably get some tea on here. That's fine. It's just adding color, right? Oh, man. As it turns out, I'm not good at tracing this teacup either. Okay. Oh, that's a terrible. I need to find something new to trace. My teacup doesn't allow for very good tracing. It's always okay to trace shapes and to use a ruler and all sorts of that stuff. 
um, different circle scotch tape. Different circle. I'll do that one uh, with this marker. And I think I want one more circle, but a smaller one. Circle. And I'm using a different pen for all of these. Awesome. Ooh, I like that circle. I'm going to draw another one of those here. And another one. So that's in total, I have five circles. And then, okay, that's fine. Sit down. They're too hard to get on. Hey. Hey. Well, if you can get his on, why can't you get his on? They're the same. You don't undo the back, honey. Or I guess if you undo the back, you don't need to undo the top. Okay, there I think I'm actually going to go darken up the edge of this first circle I drew because it looks pretty wonky. That's a little better. Okay. Now I'm going to draw um, another line. I'm going to do it with this, this one. Uh, I'm going to draw a giant V. Mine is going to be an upside down V. Your V can be however you want it to be. Oopsies. Um, next, I think I'm going to draw another V, but over here. I am on purpose not giving you specific instructions in case you're watching this like, why don't you tell me exactly where to put it? That's because we're not drawing the same thing. We're just using the same directions. Okay. Um, I'll show you what I have so far. Boom. That's what it looks like so far. I'm going to add a couple more things and I'm going to suggest that you do the same. Go ahead and look at it. Think about it and think about what you need to put in there and We'll come back in just a second. Okay. So I worked on it a little longer. I added some more elements of design that I like. I, so that means I added just more line work. And I think I really like it. I did use some ideas from his work. You A lot of times you see these like eyebrows. I don't know. They kind of look like eyebrows. He does that in a lot of them, like these thicker lines. He really pays attention to the thickness of his lines. So this is what I came up with. This is what I have. And I would love to see how yours works at school. And I am going to decide which way is up. I'm going to add some color. Are you ready? Let's do color work. I did my coloring portion of my abstract art. This is what it looks like. So, I have a question for you. On day one of class, some of you said that abstract art is what you call art that's ugly. Now, would that definition still fit for you? After what you've drawn, after what you've seen me draw, after what you've seen Wassily Kondrinsky, what he has drawn, would you consider it ugly art? Or is it just not something you'd normally see. Think about that. And then if you're still wondering the legitimacy of abstract art, go to Wassily Kudinsky's website and see how much they sell for. We're talking millions of dollars, friends. People buy them 
for millions upon millions of dollars. Would they do that with ugly art? I don't know. But I'd love for you to do this. And if you do it, please bring it to class in two weeks, not this week, the next week, because I would love to see it. I would absolutely love to see your artwork. I want to see what you do in your sketchbook. And I want to see if you do one of these because it makes my heart happy to see you learning to do art and just seeing you start to love it. So feel free to send me any messages, any questions you have, any comments, anything you want to talk about. Your moms have my number and my email address. You can also comment on this video and I will see it eventually. I don't know how that works. Um, and I'll comment back to you. So work on your art and I will see you soon.